you. And I first want to acknowledge the work of the Secretariat for the Committee, their professionalism and their efficiency, and the work of Chairman of Pat Green, and the work of the members, some of whom are here today. And I think also to acknowledge the frequent appearance of the Minister at the Committee meetings, which I think is, is very positive. I was a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee in the last oil, which was chaired by Michael Woods, and it was very much dominated, and I mean in a very positive sense, by two members, which was uh, Senator David Norris and President Michael D. Higgins. And it didn't have the aspect of trade in those days. It was very much focused on human rights. And it was, it was actually a privilege to be on that committee with those two men because of no matter which human rights issue came up, they had been there, they were so knowledgeable, they were so experienced about it, whether that was from Tibet to Colombia and other places. Now, today, the Foreign Affairs Committee does have trade, and I think that brings a range of other issues with it. The terms of reference of the report is dealing with how the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade is contributing to Ireland's recovery, as opposed to linking that with the recovery of the countries in the developing world. I think recovery is not just about economic recovery, it's also about reputational recovery. And the Foreign Affairs Committee, our work is about overseeing the work of the department, but it's also about global development and human rights. So it was kind of strange to have trade tagged on to foreign affairs because another department has primacy in the trade area. But I think perhaps it's also indicative of the changing nature of our relationship with countries in the developing world. We have a very positive, a very strong reputation when it comes to development aid. And that comes from the selfless work and the commitment initially of the Irish missionaries and lay people, work which continues today and with Deputy Breen we know we've, I was in Ghana with him on the Foreign Affairs Committee and we visited just a, a, a project that doing work that I don't think other people were doing and it was on a leprosy mission I had thought leprosy was eradicated but there was a group of Irish people there eight of my students from the University of Limerick who were working with those uh, survivors and also with children with special needs and that's replicated thousands upon thousands of times all contributing to our reputation and it continues with our development aid program, which I think had a very strong reputation because it was lacking in self-interest. So it was alarming to read Minister Bruton's words that trade missions are not the place to effectively raise human rights issues. At one of our committee meetings when we were reviewing the foreign affairs policy, this we had a panel of speakers in and we discussed that with them. Where is the role? Where does human rights come in when we're talking about trade? Because part of the question behind it is about our recovery. And it cannot be bought on the back of poor, very poor wages, appalling working conditions for workers in the developing world. And I think we have to be proactive on that. So we have to take on board ethical and sustainable economics in trade and for the, go the, the government and the department not to, ignore, not to ignore those. It's not enough to say, well, we're on the Human Rights Council or we have a human rights unit, as if to say, well, that's the area. They're the people who will deal with human rights and that it doesn't come into any other area of the government work because I think that would be paying lip service to the concept of human rights. Why would we accept a more diluted form of human rights for citizens in other countries where we trade than for our own citizens? I think we have to have the same rights have to be included that we enjoy here in those countries where we are trading. So what's wrong with integrating stable, sustainable and responsible policies on rights for workers, for women, for children into our trade policies and our approach to trade? And it can be done in a non offensive, non-confrontational way, as we, we saw happened with us when we were in Iran. I think it's important of what we're seeing around the world. We have an explosion of poverty wages, three billion of a new global working class. $1.25 uh, dollars a day, we're told, is average. In some cases, actually above average in places. Um, and they're told that they're fortunate to have that. But we see the reality, and we've seen the death tolls in, for example, Bangladesh and Qatar as just two examples. 80-hour working weeks and conditions worse than what was there in, during the Industrial Revolution. A World Bank economist recently admitted that most people across the world need a minimum of $10 daily to be able to rise above the real poverty level. And we can't ignore that, I think, when we are trading with countries, especially those where their workers are not being treated fairly. So what's being delivered for Ireland because of the trade missions? And the chairman and the minister outlined the range of those missions. There's a claim that additional jobs would be delivered for Ireland and have been delivered, and we got figures in the minister's report. But where exactly are they located? What is their sustainability? And what, who exactly is being employed? And who is gaining from these trade missions? 
I think many of them are private, profit-driven export companies, and I wonder how much of that is being infiltrated back into our main economy. And then the other question is that, are the jobs sustainable, or are they dependent on international economic activity? So that goes on to, is there enough focus on domestic industry? Because we know small and medium enterprises in this country are complaining of persistent lack of banks granting loans that would make a difference to them. How much revenue is going to multinational companies and their elite shareholders? And how much is actually coming into our domestic recovery? So I think there is hard need for hard evidence in the report. We speak about the area of policy co coherence, and we have significant, contributed very significantly to eliminating hunger. So on one hand, Irish Aid doing a fantastic job on eliminating hunger, but on the other hand, we're not as a country progressive enough when it comes to the issue of biofuels. So what we're seeing is land being taken from people, land on which they would have grown food, and that's going to satisfy the biofuel needs of the developed world. I have to acknowledge and I want to acknowledge the reputation of Irish aid in promoting human rights, but I think that has to be upheld through demanding standards in all Irish businesses carried out overseas, and that includes the trade missions, because I think it's a retrograde step and it completely undermines our reputation if we support separate um, avenues for human rights and business. So through being on the Foreign Affairs Committee and through chairing the Irish section of AWEPA, I've been able to visit a number of African countries, and there is no doubt the esteem in which Ireland is held and their desire to do business with Ireland and I think that can be that is mutually beneficial. There are serious concerns over the way in which other countries are doing business with the developing countries in Africa, countries which themselves don't have a good human rights record and which exploit them. So there's a real positive role for Ireland here because those countries in Africa I think would prefer to do business with us. Um, I think we could explore less corporate-led trade policies because there are trade relations that could deliver lower profits but greater benefits and more long-term partnerships with more sustainable jobs. There's huge potential for Irish uptake of public tenders for public services and utilities. Our third-level institutions were mentioned and they're continually producing innovative ideas for sustainable partnership in areas like health and energy and technology, startups and you know serious contenders there. But I'd like to see some more hard facts on where exactly we are supporting them. So including trade in foreign affairs, it is an opportunity for human rights to be promoted through our trade missions. And I don't think it's inappropriate that human rights would be discussed at, at trade missions. To establish decent work as a key area, to establish a decent living wage, safe working conditions, and a voice for workers also, which we have in this country. We know that the Global South is going through rapid industrialization, and there are opportunities for our economy there. But that rapid industrialization is seeing thousands and thousands employed in precarious and dangerous exploitative conditions, especially in the extractive industries. And we could, I think we have a moral duty to ensure workers' rights there. Um, when we were in Ghana, we visited the two ports, and there's absolutely no doubt that ports and the business of ports are driving forces in developing economies. I was down in Dublin port this week launching the other side of the trade program, and there were people there, port managers from Indonesia, Philippines, Nigeria, and Ghana. And in my speech, I made the same points as now. And I think there's, a very, there's an economic answer also, because contented workers who are being paid well, working in proper conditions, health and safety, they make a much more contented workforce, and I think that contributes to the economy also. Nobody was disagreeing with me on the points that I made there. There's also the area of illicit flight capital and I think we have to be a much stronger voice for country by country auditing so that the profits are not totally in the hands of the multinationals. Um, I'm listening to the report, you know, the stakeholders who are engaged in the report and on the Export Trade Council. I mean, part of the One World, One Future document is a commitment to inclusive economic growth. But what we see at those meetings are the, the profit-making companies, and I'm not against the making profit, but if there's a scenario for them. We see the big businesses there, but we don't see the other, the other side. Yes, trade with the outside world. Yes, trade that will benefit our economy. But we cannot, I believe, compartmentalise and separate human rights from that. Thank you.